Welcome to Rugby. I'm in a weird way. I'm Alex Simmons, and I'm just from my apartment in Dubai. And people have been asking me for ages, when are you going to bring Rugby M back? Well, it's not going to be back on TV while I'm in Dubai. But I thought, you know what? As we head towards the Challenge Cup final, and it's a really, really special day. Last year, I was honoured to DJ on the pitch at Tottenham Hotspur, the club I support. And this year, I've been asked back, so I'm flying into London to do the gig. I get to DJ on the pitch with four of my really good mates in rugby playing on the day. From Lee, there's Zach Ardaker, Josh Charnley, Ollie Holmes, and this man, I've known this man for, what, 15 years, maybe a bit longer, the one, the only, the whole KR captain, Sean Kenny Dowell. Skids, that's how we all know you and we love you. Uh, how's life? And obviously, you must, are you still on cloud nine from obviously winning that game the other week? Mate, life's good. Obviously, um, you know, very proud, you know, to be heading out to Wembley as captain. And, you know, there's a great feel amongst the boys at the moment. Obviously, the confidence is high. And I think we've won the last three games. And, um, you know, we're just, we're knuckling down at the moment and, and trying to give ourselves the best chance to, to go there and do the job, bro. So, um, you know, we're all over the moon. But in saying that, you know, we're, we're, we're fully focused and, um, yeah, like I said, we want to go and win the cup. So, not just happy to be there, and I want to make the most of the opportunity that we've been given. So, it's been been unreal, bro. Well, it's going to be a, an amazing day, Saturday, August the twelfth, and you've got six teams. Let's not forget, there's six, there's three games, six teams. You've got the best two women's teams in the comp, Saints versus Leeds, in the women's Challenge Cup final. The first time in history the women will play at Wembley. Amazing. And you've got two teams in Lee. And Hull KR, Lee Leopards and Hull KR. Lee haven't won the cup since 1971. Player, uh, coach, captain Alec Murphy allegedly getting Sid Iron sent off for Leeds and winning the game for Lee and making history. The Saints legend taking the cup home for Lee and really like um, cementing his legacy as a true great of rugby league, one of the best standoffs of all time. And then you've got two fantastic Yorkshire clubs in Halifax and in Batley Bulldogs with the, with the, the legendary James Brown. If you've never met him, he, he actually takes the, I think he's the most famous James Brown out of the two James Browns, the James Brown from Batley Bulldogs. It's going to be a, an amazing day of rugby league. And myself and Wagger and a fantastic lineup, including Mickey Hyam, including Scott Morell, including Adrian Morley, Martin Afire, Ashley Gibson, Lee Gilmore, the list goes on. We'll be entertaining all the fans pre and post game at Box Park Arena. Box Park Arena on Wembley Way, and we're calling the event Rugby Rocks Park. So get yourself down, get a ticket. Ticket money raises funds for Rugby League Cares, the best charity looking after all the boys in Rugby League. So please, please, please come down. But today... To kick off, Rugby AM, season whatever we're on, volume one, the first one back this year, the one and only Sean Kenny Dowell. And I've got to ask you firstly, Skids, if you win the Cup, is that career complete? And I'm talking about your journey with the Roosters, your journey as, as a Kiwi international, and coming over to the UK. And when I, when I speak about that, I'm talking holistically about playing for one of the greatest clubs in history, the Sydney Roosters representing your country and being such a consistent performer and then coming over and experiencing the culture, the difference in culture between the Australian NRL, the British Super League and, and really making your mark as one of the greatest overseas signings that we've ever seen in Super League and certainly at Hull KR. Would, would this be career complete in your last year as a professional? Honestly, it would be um, the cherry on top for me because... Um... You know, I've been very fortunate to, you know, have such a, a long-lasting and, and fruitful career, man, that I've, you know, if we were able to come here and, and, you know, win the cup for whole KR, you know, you said Lee haven't won it since 1971, but we haven't won it since 1980. So, yeah. you know, history's going to be rewritten. And, and, you know, I just think it's great for the game, you know, to have two teams that everyone was riding off on the day. Of, you know, everyone thought we were going to get relegated. So I think it's great for the game, you know, that it's not one of the major clubs in, you know, Leeds or, or St. Helens or, or Wigan. And, you know, it's a fresh look for rugby league, but, you know, it would mean everything to me if I was to, you know, be able to bring back the trophy to East Hull. And, you know, our fans haven't had much success over the last few years. And, um, you know, it would mean everything, you know, for, for me and the boys to be able to, you know, give them something to cheer about. And I, I know as a club, we're, we're headed in the right direction. And, 
you know, this is just a step in the evolution of, you know, the direction that, um, you know, the club's going and I've, I've, I've put so much in place and, you know, I've really jo enjoyed being a part of, um, you know, that progression on and off the field and, um, you know, that's no no surprise to me that we're in this position because I know how, ever, how hard everyone's worked behind the scenes and, you know, how hard the board and Neil has worked off the field to, you know, get the club in a stable position and, you know, these are the, the fruits of our labour that we've, you know, invested in into the club and, you know, the, the work we've been doing behind the scenes. So, um, you know, it's just up, up to us now. We've got 80 minutes to, you know, make it all, all worth earth, worthwhile and, you know, go, you know, deliver a, a performance that we're proud of and, you know, hopefully bring the cup back to East Hull will be, like I said, the cherry on top. Yeah, but you've been really blessed since you've come to OKR because you've worked with two great coaches in Tony Smith and, and Willie Peters. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll get onto that in a little while, but let's let's go back to when you first got to Hulky House. I, I, I met um, some fans out and they said, oh, you mates with some of the players. Said, yeah, Skids is a good mate of mine. I says, I introduced him to, to Neil Hudgel. And, she's, <laughs> and she was like, no, you didn't. I says, why, why would I lie? Why would I lie? I said, if it weren't for me, the greatest Hulky House overseas signing wouldn't be at Hulky House. And she just started laughing. But there is some truth in that. There is some truth in that. There is definitely, bro, and I... I always tell you, you know how grateful I am for for the introduction. You know things wouldn't have worked out this way for me if um, you know you didn't hadn't introduced me to Neil Hudgel and and Tony Smith and and for those communications, you know I've you know ended up having you know four of the best years of my life. So you know I'll, I'll forever eternally be grateful to you, brother, and, and setting those meetings up for me. And, it's weird because when I look back on it now, and, and I've got to tell the truth. I've got to tell the truth to every, all the people listening. I actually tried to get Skids to Hull FC <laughs> because at the time we'd done so much good work at Rugby AM, myself and Wagga, and we'd done loads of work in Hull. And Hull for me is a really underrated city. It was the city of culture not too long ago. It's an amazing place to go and the people are so passionate about rugby. And I always say to any fan coming over, you should always go to Hull Derby. You should always go and experience If you're going to come, if you're a rugby league fan, go to a Hull Derby. You've got to go and just experience it. It's it's off the chain. And Lee Radford at the time, he still is one of my close mates in rugby league. And I said, mate, Sean Kendall's one of my mates. He wants he wants to come over. I think you were at the Knights at the time. Is that right? Nice, you're at the yeah. Knights. That's right. You are at the Knights at the time. He, he fancies a change. He wants to come to Super League. Do you fancy him? And he really wanted you. Like Lee Radford were, were in, but they, could, they had no uh, quota space left. So... Um, I, I, I have a massive reverence and massive respect for Neil Ludgell just for his consistency and his passion and his energy and just how much he loved Hull Do you know, with somebody who's... And I, I just knew that Neil would look after you and treat you right because I think in Rugby League, we, we've all been there when there's there's been some shady characters involved with the sport. I think everybody knows that. And the, the very few... Your Gary Heverintons, you, you know, your Neil Ludgells, you don't get many of them. You know, they're really good people, really good people. And I, and I says, as soon as they introduce you to Neil, he was like, I'd love to speak to Sean. And then it, it snowballed from there. And, and we're here now. Did you ever think, honestly, when you those initial talks with Neil, you would ever lead the club out at Wembley for the Challenge Cup final? Uh, it's, a, it's a pipe dream, mate, honestly. And like you said, you understand how much it means to people at the club and especially people like Neil and, you know, what he's done for this place over, you know, a period of 30 years and, you know, he's been to Wembley twice and, you know, he came in after the semi-final and, you know, said how much it means to him and, and saying, you know, that the club got there in 2015, that it means absolutely nothing if you don't go there and, and win, you know, you've got, a, yeah. you've got an opportunity to write yourselves in history, but, you know, there's no one that deserves it more than that guy for, for how much he's invested in the club, in myself, and, you know, like I said, I'd lo I'd love nothing more than, you know, to be able to do that for him and, and bring home the trophy for him and, you know, all the whole KR fans, because like you said, it's such a, you know, passionate place and there's, you know, the people of East Hull, they don't have much money, bro, and, you know, they spend their, you know, hard-earned work savings and, and they come out in numbers every week, bro, and they're so passionate and all they ask for you is just to, you know, show up and, and give 100% effort and I think we've really embrace that I, I know I definitely have since I've been here and like I said the town deserves a you know a successful you know Hulk KR winning team and like I said I'd, I'd love nothing more than to you know bring that success for them for, for everybody listening back in Australia and there'll be loads of people listening to this 
all the way in Australia, all the, all the Roosters fans that still follow your journey. Um, just tell everyone a bit about how you... have It started difficult because you, you got here and went into lockdown in COVID and obviously your missus went back and you were on your own. And, um, but UK Lifestyle's been kind to you and... You know, it's, you, been, it's, it's been I'll, a breath of fresh air, brother. I've like, I really, like I said, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I had a, you know, really tough first year, to be honest. Um, you know, COVID hit, uh, you know, there was times I thought, man, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't think anyone did. And there was an opportunity, you know, we were speaking, I was just like, man, I, I think I've got to go home. And I thought the army was going to be on the street dragging people yeah. down there. <laughs> we're like, shit, what's going to happen here? But... Now, I'm so glad, you know, I stuck it out of my performances, per, probably wasn't up to scratch. Um, you know, I came to the club with, you know, a pretty bad knee injury and I didn't have a pre-season at all. And that, that's, you know, set me off on the back foot. And then, you know, throughout my, throughout COVID, my missus was at home for, you know, a large part of the season. So I was, you know, pretty much isolated and, you know, locked down for a large majority. And, and you know, obviously there's a flow-on effect when you're not happy at home and, you know, you have problems and... You know, it has an effect on on the way you play rugby. But you know, I'm so glad that I got through that first year. And you know, I've got to pay a massive shout out to Tony Smith because he, you know, he said, you know, he's seen it time and time again throughout his career. You know that people, you know, struggle to make the adjustment to, you know, live in a different country and adapt to the cold weather. And it takes a bit of time to settle in. You don't realize, you know, how tough it is. And initially, and then you know, he said, there's other people that have come and. You know, they've made their mark after a shit first year and, you know, he believed it and backed me and, um, you know, he was confident that I could, you know, turn it around in the second year and, you know, I think we got to the semi-final in the second year. So, um, mate, I really love the fact, you know, I love the English culture. It's been, um, you know, great to be able to travel and, and to understand, that, you know, it's a different kind of game over here. And I love playing in the summer, bro. It's like, you know, majority <laughs> of the seasons in the summer, you just have to get through the first two months of winter, though. <laughs> It's really hard, bro. It's a, I've really found that interesting, but mate, I love it over here. Like I said, it's been probably four years of, of some of the most fulfilling of my career. I've really enjoyed it. Mate, you're leaving the NRL. It, the NRL is a goldfish ball, and I've seen how the press have treated my friends, such as George Burgess, Sam Burgess. Um, a lot of the boys over there have been treated pretty horrendously by the press. Luke O'Donnell, is, 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 it goes on and on. And getting out of that toxic environment and I'm, I'm calling it a toxic environment because it's just a game fundamentally you're playing a game you, you're a lot of young men sometimes people make mistakes but you've seen so many times over there it's just a feel for the lads and yeah they get paid well and yeah but actually is it worth the mental health is it worth the the, the dragging your name through the mud in the press and, and people making allegations and, and all the stuff that goes on in the NRL, I, I, I see it as actually, when I used to look at the NRL and think, this is the place to be, this is the place for rugby league. Actually, the, as I get older, I'm 41 now, and I've been going through the journey with rugby AM and knowing the boys so well, I'd actually advocate to anyone, any player who who wants to enjoy life, enjoy going out and having dinner, enjoy not getting absolutely destroyed if you if you have a couple of bad games. If if you want to travel and see amazing cities on your doorstep, I'd say to anybody, come to Europe, come to Super League and, and actually open your eyes to culture and enjoying rugby. So I would say that your last season in Newcastle, you didn't particularly enjoy it and you seem to be smiling on the pitch now. Tell us a bit about the travel aspect and the, and the whole cultural side of, of playing in Super League. Yeah, I think, you know, for me personally, it was, like I said, it's the best thing. You, you come back to why you play the game because you don't have all the external, you know, noise and criticism and, and the, you know, pressures that, you know, you put on yourself internally, but, you know, all, all the external pressures that go with it. And like I said before, it was the best thing that, you know, happened to myself and, and my partner, you know, you, you come over here and, and you, you come closer together as well because you don't have to worry about anything else and you rely on each other so much more. And so we've definitely, you know, I got engaged there and we're going to get married soon and, you know, our relationship's gone to another level and, like I said, you just enjoy your footy because you go back to the reason why you started in the first place and, um, mate, you get to experience, you know, summer summertime and, and Europe and... And travelling, you jump on a, a Air, Ryan Air flight for 10 quid, you know, and you're in another country 
one hour away. It's just it's madness, and you know, like I said, it's been one of the best things that I've ever done is coming over here and you know set, set, settling and uh, getting into a good point of my life. You know where I'm comfortable with who I am and you know what makes me tick, and and I suppose understanding you know that rugby's not everything and I you know I've sort of identified with being a rugby player and I think the NRL kind of does that to you over a long period of time but you know to be comfortable in your own skin and, and enjoying life and you know it has a flow-on effect as a, as the last few years have gone for me I've really enjoyed you know coming here and, and embracing the English culture embracing Super League embracing the fans and oh, it's just given me so much joy in return. Let's mention the fans well before we mention the fans I know you're a keen traveller. Give us your top three destinations you've been to since you've been in Europe. Give us your top three. Skids' top three <laughs> go-tos. Man, I love, I love Spain. I love Ibiza, Mallorca, and then, man, we went to Croatia. That was beautiful as well, you know, Dubrovnik. Mad. And, Mad. And, you know, out on the boats in the islands and split and, man. But, you know, I think that's, that's just an added bonus of the cherry on top, you know, because that, yeah, it's so accessible and, and we've, We've made the most of it, you know. Every chance we get, we just jump on a plane and, and we try to do somewhere different every year. And and you know, we know we'll go, you know, it's that far away on the other side of the world when you live in Australia and New Zealand. So you know, we're trying to make the most of that side of it as well. well hopefully, we'll see you in Dubai soon, cause yeah, that's it. Hey, on the way yes, home, hey, come see me in Dubai. That's Let's the room ready for us, bro. <laughs> mate, it's, already, it's ready, it's ready. It's king size bed for you, mate. Um, let's talk about the fans because you've got a song. You've never had a song in your whole career and you've got a song. Tell, tell us what your song is. Sean Kenny Dow. Sean Kenny Dow. Sean Kenny Dow. Sean Kenny Dow. I actually didn't even know what it was until you just told me before we jumped on here. But now I, now I know. But, mate, yeah. they're just unbelievable. I think we were saying before, you know, they... They create an atmosphere. That's another side of it. You just, man, it creates the best atmosphere. They're, they're lively. They show up in numbers. They're, they're passionate and they have these songs where they, they just make up and you just got to laugh sometimes because it's just, um, man, it's an unreal atmosphere, especially in Craven Park. And I know our fans, you know, they travel well. They're loyal. It doesn't matter how you're going, they'll, they'll show up in, in numbers. And, you know, we hope, really hope they're going to pack out Wembley and, and, you know, put a good showing on for us down there as well. Well, apparently, according to the RFL, I've been obviously speaking to them daily at the minute because we're, we're preparing to, to work down there and, and run the fan zone and DJ on the day. It's one of the best-selling games they've had at years in Wembley because oh, I think there's loads of neutral fans who go, you know what, it's going to be a great game. Yeah. Is there a favourite? Probably not, to be yeah. fair. I think Lee... Lee have got some big game players. They've got, they, without a doubt, Zach Hardacre for me... When he went to Leeds last year, their their season started to turn around. And mm -hmm. I think that letting letting him go, when you look back on it from a Leeds perspective, might be a mistake because I think he's he's one of them guys who's just... He's, he's very similar in a way to you. He's Mr. Consistent. You know, he, he's going to be... He'll be a 9 out of 10 at Wembley. And he's a big game player. He is the, I'm, I'm sure he'll be on your tip sheet. I'm 100% sure. They've got, they've got experienced guys that have been there before, yeah. you know. Briscoe and Hardy. Josh Charnley. Josh Charnley. And, you know, I'm saying that, so are we. You know, we've got a few that have been in big games, so we know what to expect. Obviously, Wembley's another kettle of fish, and we, some of the boys haven't experienced it before, but, man, like I said, we're just going to go, you know, it's up to us how we show up on the day. Like you said, there's no favourite in this game, and, you know, anything can happen on the, on the field of dreams out there, so, you know. Last time we'll care Last time we'll care at Wembley, you have Ryan Hall and Tom Briscoe. Yeah, um, play it, destroying, you know, destroying you know, OKR. This time, you've got Holly on your wing. Tell us a little bit about playing with it. I want to mention three players. I want you to just give us a run now. Or four, actually. We'll go Ryan Hall. Let's start with Ryan Hall. How's it been playing with Holly? He's, he's also an ex-Rooster. Didn't really work out for him at Roosters. And he played well. He just he couldn't get over the line. But he's a try machine. He's a try machine, bro. And I think, you know, his trip down under, um, you know, come at an unfortunate time. He had some you know, really bad knee injuries and he, he never really was given a, you know, a, a good enough opportunity to cement his spot. But, you know, in saying that, man, if he stayed here, he would he'd be the all-time, I think he's going to be anyway, but, you know, he's, oh, I just said it to you before, he's one of the best players that I've ever played with, you know, having him really? just feel so comfortable as, as a centre and you know what you're going to get every week, um, the way he trains, 
I've never seen anything like it. You know, he's so determined, so focused. Um, you know, he's got an absolute rig on him, and he's <laughs> he's a beast in the gym. You know, I've he's never ripped to death. Cleaner. He's a hundred and you know ten, eleven, twelve kilos, running like a you know front row out on the wing, but still sprinting like a you know a fast outside back, and he's just he can do it all. You know, he gets the sets off and you know can finish a try. So you know, massive shout out to Hawley. It makes my play two carriers a lot easier, bro, because he gets you on the front foot and gets you a quick play of the ball. But you know, I've really enjoyed building up a combination with him. And like you said, he's 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 fighting a bit of a calf injury at the moment. But, you know, we've all got our, our fingers and toes crossed that he's, you know, going to be there on the day because, you know, we need his experience and he's an integral part of everything we do. So, you know, long he may be out there for I, I really like Jordan Abdul. So Jordan Abdul, I think um, I think he was still at Hull at the time. We went to do a crossbar challenge with Hull and he was getting some physio and not one player hit the crossbar at Hull, not one player. And Jordan Abdul was on the, it must have been on the 60 metres out, something like that, or maybe, maybe 50 metres out. And he went, I, I can hit it. And Radders were like, Yo, you're supposed to be injured, you. And he just turned around, pinged the ball, 50 metres, hit the crossbar. Absolute, like, and it was like so nonchalant. He, he, mean, he meant it. He, he actually just, he just pinged it like it was nothing, and just right in the centre of the crossbar. No one had got anywhere near from thirty metres. He just pinged it from fifty and, and hit it straight out. And I just thought that therefore, wow, that's a bit special. That. He's got, but he's got one of the best kicking games I've seen from the halfback. And you know, he's not a, he's not a small lad. He looks more like a, you know, thirteen or. a <laughs> A front rower, but you know he gets the boys around the park, and he's such a talented player. You know, I, I've, you know, if he decided to go out to NRL in his career, you know, I'm, I'm certain you know he could definitely, you know, fit it up there with those boys. But he's, you know, I, I think he's committed to Hull KR, and um, you know, I think he'll be, a, you know, an integral part of the club's long-term success because, you know, when he's on, and, and you know, he's been on for a large periods of of this year, you know, we win games and yeah. when he's not, not there, we struggle. So, you know, it, it says a lot about him and, um, you know, I think he got, you know, runner up for the Deli M, oh, not the Deli M, sorry, the Man of Steel last year and, you know, he was he was right up there again this year until he got injured. So, you know, that's, that's the key for him, just, you know, making sure he looks after himself and, and staying on the field because, you know, he's got a long and bright future and, you know, like I said, he'll be at Hulk out for a long time, I think. Um. Tell me a bit about Mikey Lewis because it was a bit of a game changing moment. Obviously, Holly, Holly's injured. Mikey Lewis in at fullback. Ethan Ryan on the wing. People are thinking they ain't got a chance here. They lost Holly. You know, all that experience, semi final experience. He has a world of a game. And obviously, uh, Shorrocks gets sent off for the high shot. And it's, I suppose, at the minute, it, it's just really difficult. And it, the, the clamping down and everything. And, you know, you never want to see a lad being sent off. And it's, it did affect the game. But you know what? Mikey Lewis. He's just such a handful. To, what's it like to play with Mikey? He's a little magician. He's awesome, man. He's just so instinctive. And, you know, there's there's times where, you know, he's still learning the game, but not many people can come up with the plays that he does. And, you know, he's 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 a bit of a legend here. And, you know, him and Jordan both being Hull boys, that you can see the passion that they're carrying, you know, wearing the jersey every week. And um, oh, it's, it's a credit to Mikey. You know, he, he hasn't played much fullback in his, in his life, but I, I, he's just such an instinctive player and he's so quick. You know, he's like a little pinball just bouncing around and, you know, he's a little pest. He gets his head into every tackle and, <laughs> you know, he's, like I said, he's competitive, but, mate, the way he can turn a game on his head for a, for a big run or, you know, he's a great support player showing up in the right places and I think, you know, fullback could be his long-term position going forward because he's, you know, made such a fist of it over the last three weeks that he's been put out there and, um, you know, I'd, I'd, if I was a betting man, you know, I'd say that will be his, you know, position come, you know, Wembley as well and, you know, and he's another one, you know, he's a great English half. He's got the world at his feet, still 21 years of age. Yeah, so still learning and developing his game. And, may he could be, you know, one of the great England halves, um, you know, for a long period of time if he knuckles down and, you know, learns the game and, and keeps on the trajectory that he's on at the moment. Tell us a bit about the, the, the million-dollar kick at the minute. <laughs> the man, he just dropped, parachuted in from Australia. I, you know, he's one of them, he's a 20, 40. He's 20-year-old, but he looks 40. A bit like Kyle Ablett back in the day. <laughs> Brad Schneider, so where has he come from? And yeah, what's he like as a bloke? Mate, he's, it's been a little, he's been a revelation, obviously. We've, we've missed him now, now at half, you know, and yeah. he's come in, in two games, you know, kicked two drop goals. So it's been a dream start for him in the you know, Super League. And he's just gone, how good is this? You know, he's off 
probably going to be, you know, walking out in a Wembley Cup final. He's only played, I think, 12, 12 NRL games and, and three, you know, Super League games. And he's, you know, the starting halfback for, for a Wembley game. But, you know, he's been the energy that he's showing and, you know, the the way he's been leading the team around. And, man, it's no surprise, you know, we were in a bit of a lull before he came. Mm. You know, we'd lost quite a few games. But, you know, his energy and his direction and you know, the start and, and the clutch plays that, you know, he's been able to come up with in, in three weeks' time, bro. He probably, he's already a whole KR legend in, in three three games. So, um, you know, long that may continue into, you know, a fourth and a fifth game. And, you know, you never know. In five games, it could be one of the, the great signings for whole KR as well. If Mate, he's not I'll, already. Never, I'll never forget when Mitch Garbutt came over from the Storm to the Rhinos. I think he played 11 games and got a treble. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He won eleven games and he won a treble. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget. He just, he just, kept, we, we, really close pals, and he, he turned around. And went, oh, it's just easy this summer. It's easy. I've just got it. <laughs> eleven game treble. Um, tell us a bit about like the feeling at that semi final because you, you said to me off camera it, it was emotional. What did you feel when you when you obviously leading the team as captain? You've always been a leader in your own position, but you know when when you got made captain at OKR, how, how did that come about, and what does it mean to you now? Now it's actually going to be that you're one of the few men to lead the team out of Wembley. Yeah, it means everything, obviously, and you know I was, I've I've said you know before that I've really enjoyed being on this journey, and I've learned so much about myself, you know, given this position, and um, you know I think I've grown into the role, I've grown as a person because of it, because I've I've developed skills that. You know, I've had to step up and, and you know, use it, use them and really help the boys around the park and off the field and, you know, try and try and be a role model for everyone at the club. And I think I've really enjoyed that side of it. But, you know, there was an amazing feeling being able to lead the boys out. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, Wembley when it comes around. Because, like you said, it's um, few and far between have done it before us. And, and we're going out there to, you know, write our own history. And, you know, there's only 17, you know, whole KR men that have, you know, won the trophy before us and, you know, we, we want to be the next 17 and we've got a great opportunity and that's our full focus, you know, to be honest is, you know, when you go out and you leave the team out, you, you really sort of want to, you know, do your job and, and focus on the game. But, you know, after the game was really emotional, man. You saw how much it means to the fans that, you know, they haven't had much success over the years. But I got goosebumps, you know, walking, you know, out there and warming up. You know, the emotions just overtook me. I got really emotional because um, you saw how much it meant and, you know, how passionate they were getting behind the boys. And, mate, I think we sold like 10, 11,000 at Henningley. And, you know, we, we packed out that whole ground. It was just, and like you said, it's no surprise to me that it's been one of the best selling, you know, ticketed games because, you know, people will find a way to get down there and, and support us and do whatever they can to, you know, show up in numbers and, you know, show their support to the boys. So it's, it's a massive occasion for everyone involved, man. You know, players at the club, the fans, and you know we're we're trying hard to to embrace that and use that to our advantage because um, you know they do give you a lift every time you're out there. You feel their emotions and you ride the journey with them all the way. Amen to that. Amen to that, brother. So you said that you've learned stuff about yourself. Just just what have you learned about yourself? Just out of interest. Just the leadership sort of stuff. You know, being confident in your ability to to lead and be, you know, comfortable in your own skin to, you know, to put your balls on the line and, you know, you know, set standards and, and be a role model and, you know, set the co a, a culture that you're proud of. And, um, you know, I probably didn't see myself as a, you know, captain coming over here, but, you know, I really am grateful to Tony Smith for that opportunity, being able to leave the boys out. It's something that I'm incredibly proud of. And, you know, I don't take it for granted, not, not a day or, or every time that I get to lead the boys out as a, it's a special moment. Absolutely outstanding, mate. Let's, you know, you, you, you could follow in the footsteps of, of, a, of, a, of a true great in rugby league and a, and a true whole great, and that's Roger Millwood, Sir Roger Millwood. Um, what would that mean to you? Because, you know, he's, he is a true gentleman of rugby league. He's, he's, you know, he's a Hall of Famer, somebody who's is steeped in tradition across across the game, so much reverence from all clubs for such a hero of the sport. And you could be the second Hull KR captain to, to lift that trophy for this great club and, and following his footsteps of all the people to, to be the next man in line. It's, it, it's bonkers when you think about it. It's just like, it, 
it's just like yeah just yeah, mad. Yeah, look, it's, it's amazing bro when you, you you put it you know in perspective like that he's such a great of the game and and such a legend of our club and you know i was very fortunate you know we had um you know a, a reunion of all the old ex-players that you know they beat queensland in 1985 and we had all the old players come and get together and um, I was fortunate enough to sit with Roger's um, wife and kids, you know, at that dinner. Wow. And this, we knew we were off to, um, you know, that, that was before the semi-final, and, and just to be able to listen to to the stories of, you know, the journey that he went on as a player and a coach, and you know, to understand more about his life and you know, what he did for Hull KR, and um, you know, I really tried to embrace that and, and really treasured those those experiences and learning about the history of the club and you know what he did for the club and. You know, like I said, there's only one other captain to lift the trophy, so it's you know every motivation to follow in his footsteps and you know be the second because he's um you know he's done so much for our club and, and for our game and you know he really is a club legend. Mate, it's, it, it's extra meaning as well because you've you announced earlier this year you retire and it's your last your last year in rugby league as a player. Now I'm like before we got on this recording, I'm like, what's up? Are you injured? What's going on? What what what's wrong? And you've got you've got a great opportunity to stay with the club, to to grow the, with the club with Willie and Danny Maguire, and Frog and, and all those guys. But um, your body's healthy. You're fine. You could go. You said you said you said to me the words, "I could go on." So why are you not going on? Mate, I think you know. For me, I'm I'm very content with everything that I've achieved in the game, and you know I don't feel like I need to you know prove myself. I'm at a, a certain point in my life where I'm you know, I'm I'm ready for the next thing, and if I if I kept going, it would just be you know prolonging the inevitable. I've got to take that jump sooner or later, and I was very grateful to the club. You know they gave this opportunity that you know it would make my it's going to make my transition so much easier. You know to stay in the game, to stay in the club, and and stay on the journey with the club. Because, man, they're going that way, you know, with the investment yeah. that they've got and, you know, to be a part of, you know, bringing on the next generation of, you know, whole KR players and, and working with the academy and, you know, staying with the first team and staying in that environment. And it's just, it was just, you know, a no-brainer for me. And I think, mate, looking back on my career and my life, I, I think I set a goal, man, when I was like, you know, 20, 21 years of age that I was going to play over 300 games and I'll retire when I'm 35. But I'm up to like 360 something <laughs> games, and you know I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm still going at you know, almost 36 now. So, man, I'm, it's 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 out. You know, it's it's been everything I've I've dreamed of and more. And you know, I've, to be given this opportunity to to play at Wembley, you know, I just you, yeah. you couldn't write about it. It's such an honour, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, like I said, it'd be the cherry on top of a, of a great career, and I'm really looking forward to the next chapter of my life. And and you know digging my teeth in and learning a new trade and coaching and, and giving back to the game that's been so good to me. Yeah, it's, it's a Roy of the Rovers kind of story. It's like that that hero moment. And I hope, mate, I hope it can be yours. I hope to see you walking up those Wembley stairs. Like I said to you at the start of the podcast, I'm, I'm not going to take sides. May the best team win, <laughs> but I, I am rooting for my friends. And, and, and obviously you're you're a very close friend and, and it's just it's such an... So it's just, I'm so happy, mate, to see you... I've achieved so much. It's such a great club, and uh, will you win or lose? We were having a beer after the game. Is that hundred yeah, percent? Oh, it's great. I'm so so uh, uncanny, you know that. Given the the set of events that happened, you know you're going to be there yeah. playing, and I'm going to be leading the team out. And you know who would have ever thought that four years ago? It was just it's unheard of. You know the position that we're in to where we're in now. Like I said, it's been such a fulfilling journey, and, and to be a part of that, you know, progression to to where we were, to where we are. It's just been, you know, like I said, some of the best times of my life. I'm so glad you're going to be there to, you know, experience it. And, you know, fingers crossed it's a, it's a happy ending to the day. Man, it's going to be it's going to be a great day, whatever happens. And I think that whether you're a, a Leeds Saints, Hull KR, Lee Leopards, um, Batley Bulldogs or Halifax Panthers fan, I think everyone's going to enjoy an amazing day of rugby league. I think that, you know, we talk about, you know, rugby league cares, and we look at we look at the, like the sport in this country. That what we do so well, like learning disability rugby league, wheelchair rugby league. It's the most inclusive game. Um, physical disability rugby league, the rise of the women's game, and, and 
I know that, you know, we were the first to do Magic Round, we're the first to do the LDRL. Australia does copy a lot from us, and when I look at, there's nothing for me that that showcases the game better in terms of the people and, and how the boys treat each other than, than Rugby League Cares as a charity. Chris Rostron and the team, Keith Senior, you know, the guys there, Fanny Stevenson, doing such a such a good job with the charity. Um, but also, when I look at um, Rob Burrow and Ke- Kev Sinfield, I think that that relationship there has just, it's touched, it's touched people far outside the Rugby League bubble, far outside the world of sport. Across the, the whole world, people now know the name Rob Burrow, they now know the name Kev Sinfield, and they've raised so much awareness, and not just the money, awareness of people, thousands of people suffering from that awful disease around the world. And I think the way Rob's kind of tackled that has just been, just he's, this, he's the toughest man alive. It's the toughest, man. It's one of the toughest battles. I think I think I was speaking to Hawley about it today. You know, they've given mm. him two years to live. He's already living, you know, already lived four years. It's a testament yeah. to, to his character and his positivity. And, you know, rugby league's such a great game. It's a, it's all about the people. And they really do look after their own. And there's a, there's a respect for everyone that plays the game. And it goes far beyond, you know, just the competitive side. It's, um, like you said, they take care of people and... Um, but we're probably working class people, you know, we know what it's like to struggle and we look after people, like you said, rugby league cares, do a, do a great job of helping people in need and, you know, the the spirit and, and you know, character that, you know, Kevin Sinfield has shown is just, you know, blowing people's mind of what they've been able to achieve and, you know, give back to other people suffering with MND. It's a, mate, how Rob's tackled, tackled that battle has been so inspirational and, you know, it's, he's just, like you said, inspired so many beyond the game of rugby league that it's... um. Yeah, it's a credit to him and his family and, and you know, Kevin Simpson as well. It's amazing. I think one of the biggest credits will be as well, like, I went to see Hull FC lift the cup two years back-to-back. And in the crowd that day, there were plenty of red and white shirts and probably they're dragged down with families. And, and you know what they're like, the, the, the red and white shirts will wear the shirt just to, just to let everybody know, even though... They're there because it's family member or it's a friend or whatever, or it's a lads trip or it's a, a rugby league trip. They, they'll go, and, and you just know that on the day, there'll be plenty of black and white shirts there because whole people, first and foremost, yes, it's 50-50, and that derby is something else. How did you feel when you first walked out in that derby? What, what, what how, how have you felt about it being, being out there? Because you, you lost one recently. You lost one. It, it's a lonely place when you lose that game. <laughs> it's horrible, man. You can't wait to get out of there fast enough because, you know, the, the other team's giving it to you. Uh, as you walk out, bro, they, they're absolutely, you know... Probably can't say what they're really saying on on here, but <laughs> man, it's a it's a special game. It's a special rivalry. It's um like I said before, it's a rugby la- it's a rugby league town that they they really embrace that rivalry and it, it separates families. Um, you know, throughout that throughout the weekend, man, it's just it's deafening the the noise that you you have at a derby. I've never experienced anything like it. Um, it's just their games you earmark on the calendar every year that you just love being a part of and. Um, it's just good for the game. You get so many people out. It gets the whole city interested. And, um, mate, like, I just love playing in them. And it's, it's nice, like you said, that um, well, we've had heaps of black and white supporters, you know. Obviously, that they, they do, you know, support the other team once, they're, once their team's out, you know, because it's the city of hell. They do love rugby league. And, you know, hopefully we can get one. It'll be nice to, you know, win one. <laughs> mate, I hope you win one. I, and I hope... Mate, every year, you know, I think that's one thing I learned pretty quickly. That was some of the first thing the fans said, you know, we don't care about what happens during the season as long as you win you know, <laughs> that trophy. Bring it home, bring down the Clive Cl- Cl- Sullivan trophy. And I think we, we Mate, managed to, even though we lost the second game, we won on, on four against this year. So, um, you know, it's always a fierce battle. Like you said, form goes out the window. It's just such an emotional game and, and the, the players love playing it and get up for it and, no, anything can happen on, on those days and they're, they're, they're a pleasure to be a part of them. Mate, I'm going to be doing a series on, on music and what, what music, the role music plays in your life as well, so we'll, we'll get you back on, on for that. But as I'll be playing the music as you're warming up, have you got any requests and, and what's your kind of go-to tracks pre-game? Mate, any, a bit of house, anything that gets me pumped yeah. up. Bro. I loved your Marbella mix that you sent out, bro. So yeah. I mean, still pump it. I put, put that on in the gym sometimes, is it? 
It's a great mix, and I'm sure you know you're you're the man on the decks, bro. I listened to all your sets throughout lockdown, and you know got me through some some good times. And every time I you know put your mix on, it gets me up. So um, yeah, make sure you get the tunes pumping, brother. Man, I've got a new tune out this Friday. Um, it's good, so I'm gonna send. I'll send it out to everybody, and if everybody could share it and stream it, it's uh, it's my first release as LS14. So I've changed my name from Alex Simmons to LS14, just because living away from Dubai, I kind of I've always kind of been this this guy in Leeds who was DJ, who's been on TV, done rugby and all this stuff, and it's like you kind of get that ego driven side of like you, you're living up to a persona that really it's not. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's like kind of. I was stuck in Leeds for a long period of my time mentally and leaving Leeds and, and coming to Dubai, I've kind of shed that and I just felt like the only thing I miss like is our kid, is my mum, is my kids and, and everyone resides where I'm from, LS14, so it was kind of the obvious name for me and uh, so my first track released is LS14 but this Friday it's a chronic EP out on Fibre Records, the big bar in town, I've now got a record label. And uh, I'm I'm really honoured to be the first ever release on Fibre Records. So in 20 years' time, when it's one of the biggest labels in the world, I can always turn around and say I was the first. And um, I'll I'll play some tunes for you, mate. You and the boys, brother. I you know wish yeah. you nothing but the best because you you've definitely got a you know a talent for it, and you can see how passionate you are about it. So you know, just still be in there and producing and, and making music, bro. That's what you love to do, and that's one of your passions. So it's um you know I love I love it, brother. I can't wait to hear the new track. Mate, I love it, mate, and uh, best of luck in the game. I'll speak to you before. I'll see you the night before, no doubt, and I just hope that you guys go well. You've had a tough year. Big love to Willie and all the boys, and uh, cheers for coming on. Uh, Ruby M is back, episode one. Thank you, the man, Sean Kenny Down. Appreciate it, bro. Good to see you, man. I'll see you in two weeks' time. Yeah, the boys. I'll just uh, stop recording, and then we're going to... Man, that was class.